Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to do a follow-up on the drama with, with uh, you know, Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons. Chris Cox, CEO of Hasbro, made a point of saying that they're gonna strip mine decades of content. Literally, he said mine. He said, we're going to mine decades of content to feed into AI and we're gonna have like unlimited adventures uh, with D&D &D and Magic the Gathering. I'm confused because people have gone after them multiple times about them using AI yes. instead of real artists. And, yes. and they're clearly, the audience is clearly against the use of AI. Yes. So he just, so the dick, I mean, I'm sorry, Cox, just basically says, hey, guess what? Uh, I know y'all hate it, but we're gonna use AI to mine more stuff. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's like they're deliberately, are they trying to tank the company? I don't point? know, I'm like- you already know that this pisses people off. If I were on Hasbro's board, I would be like, what the hell is Hasbro? Like we pivoted to movies because Brian Goldner wanted to do movies. And then we wound up having to sell the movie studio off. And now you're chasing video games because this guy's from Microsoft and all he cares about is making video games. I mean, if he had it his way, Hasbro wouldn't be making any toys. And I, I, I have to wonder if that isn't gonna be the future with Hasbro, that they'll have all this IP that they acquired like Disney, but then companies that wanna make physical toys like Super 7 or Basic Fun, they'll get the license and they'll make stuff. And it could be the same with the games too. There's There have been a lot of rumors that they're talking that they might sell off or outsource Dungeons and Dragons before it's all said and done. And I'm starting to think that that is a very real possibility it's because otherwise it doesn't make any sense people your audience has, has told you over and over you've had to make so many apology tours over use of ai and now you're just like nope we're just gonna use ai yeah they got busted i mean that's what blows my mind like they got busted three or four times and they're like oh yeah we're not we don't use ai well yeah it's ai but it wasn't the finished product well yeah it was yeah. They're doing it the whole time, but at least they're going to announce that they're going to do oh, it. Oh, we didn't know that the AI artist that's known for producing AI art was going to turn in AI art. I, I mean, it's right. literally on the guy's bio. This is, they do. We were so shocked. A, oh my God. The art we got was AI. How could we have possibly known? Oh, it's right on the bio that that's what they do is AI art. Okay. Okay. So now they're getting called out by other artists. And it's not just the artists that have to worry. I mean, that's, that's what he was talking about was he said, we've got. 50 years of D, &D text oh, wait, that we can I, mine but wait i thought a lot of that was problematic until about you know 10 years ago well we'll take the racism out so we've got 40 or we got we'll 10 use gemini years. <laughs> yeah we got about 10 years of stuff that we can do we'll use google gemini and we'll we'll uh we'll make sure that uh, everybody's race swapped gender swapped whatever but you know what i'm saying like and the way he talks about it it's very much like bob Iger. Chris Cox, he talks about, he doesn't talk Those about how dicks. It makes sense. Yeah, he doesn't talk about uh, what these brands actually mean to people. He's just like, he's just like, oh yeah, it's IP that we have that, that you know, we can mine. Literally, he said, we can mine this IP for value. And I'm like, you need to go. Like, I don't know who is above Chris Cox, but Chris Cox and Cynthia Williams, they need to get the fuck out of the company mm -hmm. because they're destroying Hasbro. They're destroying Wizards of the Coast. Whatever fan goodwill there was is gone now because they have been caught lying so many times. They sent the damn Pinkertons to a guy's house for because he got some cards early. They the OGL, they wanted to own your shit so they could probably feed that into the AI too. So let's talk about this. This come from uh, CBR, shockingly enough, formerly formerly a comic book news site. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woo Magic the Gathering and D&D Artist calls out Hasbro CEO's AI comments. So this is uh, Denman Rook speaking out against Hasbro CEO Chris Cox's statements regarding AI. And again, it's not just artists. That's the thing. Before it was AI art, they're talking they want to create like modules and adventures whole cloth because they've got all this this stuff. You know, dec he said decades of text that we can strip mine, decades of ideas that we can strip mine. Uh, on March 15th, on a thread, Rook published an email sent to art directors he's previously worked with at Wizards of the Coast. Rook, who has created artwork for both Magic the Gathering and D&D, &D, responded to statements made by Hasbro CEO Chris Cox about the company's purported R&D efforts around AI, which include referring to the latter property as literally, this is the, 
God, I can't believe he said it. He said the quiet part out loud. 50 years of content we can mine. <laughs> he literally says 50 years of content they can mine. So I've sent this email to the art directors I've worked at, with at Wizards of the Coast. I hope other Magic or D&D artists will do the same. I know that there are other artists, and I forget their names off the top of my head, that they noped out after they got busted lying. Again, if you're going to use it, you know, and your consumers are okay with it, as long as you mark that this was generated with AI, that's one thing. But they're like, oh, no. We already well, know their consumers don't like it. It's, and they're, it's not just because you lied about it. They just don't like it. So why yeah. would you double down on it? It doesn't make any sense to me. <sighs> right, wait, so which consumers do you want? Because you keep that, we're talking about the consumers we want, but I'm very confused about what those are because you chased all the old heads off and now you're chasing all the new people off. So I'm not really understanding what consumers you're going to have left. I don't understand. I don't know who's left at Wizards at this point. I mean, they laid off 1,100 people right before Christmas. So they, and, and I guess the majority of the people they laid off were with Wizards of the Coast and, and specifically Dungeons and Dragons. So they don't have any, like I said, they don't have any long-term plans for D&D other than it becoming a, an AI-fueled video game uh, mobile, shitty mobile app. And I joked about them turning it into a shitty mobile app, but they kept going on about how Monopoly Go was such a big hit for them. <laughs> they did actually, yeah. And they're, you know, so I could totally see them using AI, taking all these ideas and recombobulating them. And yeah, they're just like, yeah, well, consumers don't care. The normie the consumers, consumers don't do care. care, though. The hardcore gamers care, but do normies care? Oh, Dungeons and Dragons. But I'm like, like at that point, you know, what is that? What does D and D offer that stands out apart from all the other shitty fantasy mobile apps? Because they all look very samey. Mm -hmm. You know, they all have that like AI generic quality to the artwork, and you're not bringing anything to the table. But anyway, this Demon rookie says. Hi, all my amazing art directors. If there's anybody left, I just wanted to send out an email regarding some concerning messaging around AI I've seen from Hasbro CEO Chris Cox in an interview with GamesBeat. First off, we're doing R&D efforts around AI. This is what Chris Cox said. D&D has 50 years of content that we can mine. Literally thousands of adventures we've, cre we've created. Yep, I said in the other video, you haven't created shit, Chris Cox. You haven't created shit. Other people have. And even then, 50 years... Only the last, you know, what, 10 have been Hasbro, 20 have been Hasbro, maybe. Uh, and, you know, they've just recombobulated older ideas. Probably tens of millions of words we can own and leverage. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, just such a, like, <laughs> seriously, you don't broadcast that. No. Your consumers already hate you. They distrust you after OGL, after the Pinkertons, after... Random idiotic changes uh, being made to D&D &D to be current year. And it's like they're doing that on one hand. They're like, well, we don't want to offend anybody. But yeah, AI, man, we'll just strip mine your shit. Yeah, we'll just strip mine your shit. Anyway, Demon Rook says, if Chris Cox or anyone else in senior positions at Hasbro or Wizards thinks the works I or other artists, art directors, writers, dungeon masters, or creative humans have poured into these games are content that we can mine with AI – then I will have to take my future creative energy okay, elsewhere. But here's the problem. You guys work, work for hire, so they can. I mean, is it the right thing to do? Probably not. But they can do it because they own it. Like, you were paid. They own it. Yeah. Well, he's, I mean, he's saying his future, basically, yeah, future, I'm not going to do it. Saying, he's not, there he's might not be a future. Past things that they're going to, to, to do. But I'm just like, yeah. They're, well, they're, I was like, I was talking about, you know, Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman with Dragonlance and uh, Ed Greenwood with Forgotten Realms. It's mm -hmm. like they've got all of their words in there and they could make Dragonlance and Forgotten Realms right. stuff forever. And the thing is, you can't do anything about you it. You can't because, do anything about you it. You know, you know, it's bullshit. I mean, is it bull? Yeah. Like, here's here's where I am, because people are like, well, you guys use AI in your thumbnails. There's a big difference between. Being open to, uh, I guess, the responsible ethical use of AI, consensual AI, if you want to call it that. You know, if somebody wants to use AI to help them make something, and if they disclaim it to the consumer that they're using it, and also, you know, using AI for like thumbnails and stuff like that, it's that's it's like disposable garbage stuff. Like our videos burn off after a couple of days, and that's that's it. You know, and and we would not use AI. Uh, in, in a project that pe consumers are paying for. And if we did, we would disclaim it. And they probably will in very, very small print. 
you know. But uh, that being said, like your your audience has clearly your c- consumer base has clearly told you that they they are not interested in AI on any level. He said it's sad because Magic and D and D are probably one of, if not the most fun projects I've worked on in my creative career. I know I'm one artist among many, but I'm probably not alone. These brands have been built on cre- uh, the creativity of human artists, art directors, writers, game designers. It's true. Lot. Yeah, well, that's okay. They're just fifty years of words that can be mined, Damon. Uh, it would be an insult to not only the creative individuals who have done this work, but to the fans who love these games because of immensely the immense creativity put into it. Hopefully, Wizards will not head down this route. I hope this email is one of numerous other ones that uh, artists have sent in. So hopefully, it will put pressure on senior decision makers. All the best. I hope we can continue working together. But they don't need you. They don't need the you. The thing anymore. is, there you have your work already inputted from before. They'll just say, "Oh, do a piece in the style of." And that's yeah. what it'll do. Like, if you guys, oh, we're not working for you anymore. They don't, I mean, the right thing to do if you guys were all mad about it, understandably so, is to say, oh, yeah, we're not going to do that. But they technically could just still do the AI and you really can't stop them unless they they, they have a, you know, about a conscience. Yeah. I mean, this is this is January of this year. This is, uh, you know, a couple of weeks after they fired 1,100 people. Again, put this together with the firing of people in at Wizards of the Coast primarily and the rumors that D&D is going to be outsourced or sold. And it's not looking good. I'm going to be honest. It's not looking good for Magic or D&D. Um, you know, and they kept having to backpedal like, well, we said the marketing image we posted was not using AI, but it was. Uh, but no, now we're not going to use AI for the final art. Well, maybe we Psych. will. Psych. They lie. They lie time and time and time and time again. They send the Pinkertons to your house if you get a pack of cards early. They make unnecessary changes to the game. What pisses me off as an old head is the fact that they felt the need for the 50th anniversary to throw the OG creators under the wheels of the bus. Yeah, of course, something made 50 years ago probably wouldn't pass muster now, but you don't have to call attention to it. No. You know? But but they'll have no problem inputting that in the system to make new things from it. Yeah. They don't need you anymore. That's the thing. They still need the customers, though. And the customers are pissed, too. It's, it's only problematic when they think they can leverage it for outrage. <laughs> so. Yeah, that that's the thing. And, um, you know, I've seen some videos talking about the situation in Brazil where they decided they're not even going to bother with Portuguese translations. And I think it was uh, Dungeons and Discussion, I want to say. It's a Scottish woman. She does the channel. But I saw the video, and she was talking about how, you know, for all their, oh, we love diverse people. We love diversity. We love, you know, uh, our global audience. We love, but they're canceling all the translations around the world. Cause yeah, they'll just have AI do it. D and D is going to, it's going to be, and I was joking, but I think it's actually going to happen. I think D and D is just going to be a shitty mobile app. And if there is going to be a tabletop version of D and D going forward, they're probably going to outsource it to somebody else. I mean, that's just how it is. Yeah. And it's sad. It's it's just like Disney. They buy properties they don't understand. They milk them dry. And then they 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 get rid of all the value that, that the brand had. I mean, who, other than the most incompetent fucking morons on the planet, who could drain Star Wars of all, all of its value? But they found a way. You know, they they juiced it for all the blue milk it had. And and uh, that's that's the Disney way. That's the Hasbro way. And this company isn't even a toy company anymore. I don't know what it is. But it ain't a toy company because they're not selling toys because those toys are piling up at Ollie's. Just saying. We're going to wrap this up. Yes. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, rants. We'll talk later. Bye.